Good afternoon, space flight enthusiasts. Have a really quick update for you folks today. A real quick bulletin giving you my reaction to some incredible footage that has appeared online over the last few days. And I decided to combine that footage with the footage that we've seen already from the Flight 8 reentry, the Flight 8 anomaly that took place, to get an idea as to what actually happened during this anomaly and during the re-entry because the footage that we got from the ground courtesy of Astronomy Live and the astonishing equipment that this guy has at his disposal to get some amazingly clear shots of Starship as it was re-entering the atmosphere well got a lot of new details in terms of what might have happened during this anomaly and just how long the anomaly actually went on on before Starship completely burnt up. So I'm going to share my reaction to all of this footage with you along with some new details about the Flight 8 anomaly that you might not have heard yet, at least some speculation as to things that might have happened in the aftermath of this ill-fated flight. So we're going to dive into all of this right now. Okay, what's really interesting about this footage is the fact that Astronomy Live captured what was going on with Starship, managed to grab an image of Starship burning up in the atmosphere pretty much exactly after the footage from SpaceX cut out. So, of course, we're seeing Starship in a wild tumble at the moment with two engines still operational. And, of course, with two engines being operational, it was definitely flying off trajectory as it was tumbling as well, although a tumbling flight pattern also meant that it wasn't really going in any one particular direction off trajectory. Then it drops down to a single engine at that point, and eventually, of course, we're going to lose the Starlink cameras completely, although the footage shows that we have one engine still in operation, but that's about to drop off here. There we go that one engine goes out as well. But as I said, what was incredibly fortuitous about all of this is that Astronomy Live managed to catch up with Starship almost exactly as SpaceX's cameras cut out. So the footage you're watching right now, this is what was happening to Starship almost exactly after the cameras cut out with SpaceX. So as I said, quite fortuitous that all of this happened in quick succession that Astronomy Live managed to grab hold of this image almost immediately after we lost Starlink coverage. In just a moment, you're going to see all of this happening in much greater detail because Astronomy Live had at least two telescopes trained on this object. There may have actually been even more than that. And by the way, thank you so much to Astronomy Live for allowing me to make use of this footage. It's quite spectacular and everybody needs to go over there and subscribe to that channel because this guy does some amazing work. But at this point, you can see that the core of the vehicle has stabilized and is burning up at this point. And a little bit later on, we are going to transition over to how observers in the Caribbean were seeing Starship immediately after Astronomy Live lost sight of it. And by the way, I had one of my team members who goes by the name of Darth Rust on Discord, who has a lot of practical and professional experience with rockets, especially missiles, have a look at this footage to determine as many details as he could observe about the footage and what was happening to Starship, and it was most enlightening indeed. So here we go into much more close-up footage, and based on what we are seeing here, this is not just fuel escaping. This this is actually rocket exhaust, so definitely one engine, or at least I strongly suspect that at least one engine was still operating on Starship this long after the Starlink cameras cut out. You can also see some changes in coloration here, so let's try to give you some explanations as to what you're actually watching right now. This is probably a combination of rocket exhaust.
exhaust and a major structural leak. The propellants, both cryogens, that is to say the methane and the liquid oxygen, will be quite visible because it freezes into an ice crystal outside the tanks, and these crystals reflect a lot of light. The spiral, of course, is caused by the ship rotating as it's leaking the propellants out. The multiple arms of the spiral suggest that there are multiple major leaks in the rocket. The color change later in the video is probably ionized atmosphere interacting with the gas cloud around the ship, not necessarily a differential between the liquid oxygen and the liquid methane. So the ship and the cloud of gas around it is still moving at a significant velocity, and ultimately it's the difference in momentum that's causing the color show on re-entry. In many ways, the same thing happens during the hot stage separation during ascent, although of course this is under much more unfortunate circumstances. So once again, a very spectacular light show, but I would say for at least 30 seconds after the Starlink cameras cut out, and possibly more than that, Starship was still under power. And also, we have multiple significant leaks existing in the spacecraft very early in the process, again supporting the idea that there was some sort of explosion inside the spacecraft, some sort of explosion perhaps in the engine compartment, or perhaps even in the propellant tanks, or somewhere in the propellant feed system. Now, Astronomy Live lost sight of the ship approximately 11 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff, and approximately 8 minutes after that, actually a little less than 8 minutes, that's when we started getting some footage of Starship completely burning up and there being a wide debris path. And now that we've seen just how violently the ship was rotating and just how much momentum that that was being created by both the engine still in operation and also the multiple leaks on the ship, you can see how centrifugal force would start throwing debris out over a wide field as the ship began to break apart. Therefore, it was a very good move on the part of the FAA to redirect so many flights and to declare a debris-related event, expecting that debris would fall out Outside of the expected re-entry corridor where debris was expected to fall in case of an anomaly. Again, the reason being all that violent movement and violent centrifugal force chucking pieces of the rocket all over the damn place during the re-entry process. That's something you don't want to take any chances with, especially with planes in the air. So, there you go, a little bit more information about this event. Let's hope that things improve substantially with Flight 9. I will obviously be providing coverage for this event as well. Once again, many thanks to Astronomy Live. Make sure to head over to his site and subscribe to his channel. Lots of other really cool content to see on that channel along with this footage. And until next time, stay angry about space no longer in a vacuum it's like a it's like a re-entering capsule she's burning up